positive thought. But that's not salvation. You stop and really think about how powerfully good Jesus Christ and the rest of the Bible is trying to tell you. It really is a mind shattering and brain shattering. I uh, one of the reasons I retired is, you know, I got cancer. I haven't told, didn't ever tell the Azusa people that. Uh, but uh, there's no point keeping a secret. I, uh, <clears throat> and uh, it really, uh, it, it's one of those cancers that really shouldn't be called cancer. It, uh, the doctor said, this isn't going to kill you. You have, a, sorry, you have a life expectancy of 25 years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, that'll get me to 85, you know, <laughs> you know, but, you know, when the doctor says you have cancer, uh, it, with the brain, it just puts all this fear. I, I just knew I was going to die tomorrow, and I needed, there, and, you know, it certainly wasn't easy with the church, being in all that transition, too, and the septic tank was dead, and like everything, everything was going wrong, and and uh, I remember being at the City of Hope, getting a blood draw. There, there aren't any symptoms to this cancer. Yeah, yeah I don't. I think it's just a way for City of Hope to get about five hundred dollars every three months. <laughs> and they just take your blood and say you're fine. I, I don't know. It might be. I may be being scammed here. So I, because <laughs> I. The only symptom I have is just I notice I get tired. You know, uh, how I, I sh shouldn't be, uh, but not bad. And uh, and the only way they know it is just you have more white blood cells than you're supposed to have 10,000, and I have like 30,000 now, so that's not bad. So, uh, But uh, you know, I remember getting a blood draw and I just, you know, collapsed uh, and uh, I mean, just fell apart. I just, I had, Panic, panic attack, or whatever you call it. And they had to call the chaplain in. She was a Presbyterian minister, one of our Presbyterian people. I didn't even know her. And, and uh, we went into a private room and talked about it. And, and um, you know, she asked me, can you see any hope? And I said, no. I mean, at that point, I, I mean, that's truthful. I mean, I just, I thought my work was ending. I'm being prepared to die. Uh, and I, I mean that was like a brick wall. I just really had no hope. Uh, and I said, "Well, I feel stupid. You know, I'm a Presbyterian minister. <laughs> I've preached about hope my whole life. I've done. I've buried my entire church. That whole cemetery up there has half of them are Azusa Presbyterians. I, uh, you know, I feel like a." Wimp or something, or and uh, and the doctors say, you know, this isn't going to kill you. It's, you know, it, it's just uh, you have high blood blood count, and uh, and uh, and she explained my problem, which I think is everyone's problem, is you know she said your your brain here. Uh, this is the Presbyterian chaplain. Uh, you know, with, you know, these kind of panic attacks or any, anything like that. Uh, when something bad happens, uh, your brain is so, you've thought about this so much in your brain that the circuits, the more you think, whatever you think about, uh, your brain makes easier to think about it. It kind of makes the highway easier to travel fast. You know, the electricity needs to go faster in your brain. So the more you think about it, it physically changes your brain and makes you more susceptible. And, and you know, you've only been thinking about bad things so much so long that that highway is like only 10 feet long and you, you can go instantly between the bad in your brain and there's no way out of it. That's it's it's short circuit. That's why you got these panic attacks. And uh, and you treat the bad like it's a 
hundred percent real. You know, like, like that's guaranteed invincible. <laughs> you know, it's like a cement wall. And uh, and it's just not true. You know, there people get cancer. Almost everybody survives, you know, and it's up and down, even it, it goes and who knows what would happen uh, uh, with the church and everything. You know, it, it just, you can't, you believe that the bad is absolute. And, you know, our gospel is about the good. And, uh, you know, she said, you know, you need to, like, cut that highway off or not think about that and try to make that connection between your brain and the good as easy and as fast as you think about cancer. And, you know, that was another experience that woke me up. I, in that, in her office, I just flatly could not believe that. I just did not, I thought I literally was going to die. There absolutely was no hope. But once I started, you know, practicing just changing the way I thought, then I could see, uh, you know, that the good things I make myself even preach, I don't believe emotionally with my heart. I should be treating all the good news of the gospel like the brick wall. Like that's invincible. Like that's all powerful. Like, uh, you know, like, like that's for certain. And the bad, I know, intellectually, is not guaranteed at all. It's going away. I don't there's no, you, you don't need to worry about death, evil, anything. Uh, and it was stunning to me how much I had, you know, like you, you read all those nice sayings in the New Testament. You say words like salvation and redemption and all that, but they're just, they're, it, we don't put the emotional energy and instant connection to the goodness to them that we do. Whereas if we say, oh, your checking account is overdrawn, you have no money, <laughs> we treat that as, that's for certain. Or we're going to have to amputate your leg, that's for certain. You know, and what if you treat the good news with the same integrity and power as we do the bad news, you know, that, uh, but we don't. We always interpret it as just a nice Hallmark card, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, that whatever's bad has to be real. And whatever's good is just nice, nice sayings. So, uh, anyway, that's, uh, you know, another story I want you to, to share with you. And it's a lifelong journey because uh, I think we're all sort of hardwired to, when something bad happens to us, we automatically feel fear and automatically assume more bad things are going to happen or that the worst is going to happen. And that's simply not true. I could tell, I that day I told her lots of stories in my own congregation of people who were certified going to die and didn't uh, that I knew. You know, I had plenty of things that should convince me that the bad is not good. Uh, I mean, the bad is not 100%, but I just didn't do that step of accepting it, embracing it myself. And that's, uh, and that's really the key. Uh, I think a lot of times we do these Bible studies, and it all stays in our head. And we just make all these long theologies, we make all these great arguments, we make all this, you know, we have these questions we have when I ask God, but what about just feeling the message and absorbing it and trying to let that be the dominant thing in our life? Just standing on the mountaintop like Kenji. Let's pray. God, uh, you know us. Uh, often we define our whole life as problems. And we keep praying to you for solutions. But your 
willing to offer to us a hope beyond hope, something that makes our problems irrelevant. Uh, forgive us when we uh, look at the problems of our life and consider them uh, invincible. And we know they're, they, we've had all of us have problems and we've overcome them uh, or learned to live with them. They are not invincible. The Lord, even more and more, place in our hearts the opposite view. That what is good is invincible. Uh, that, that what you have made that is uh, good news from creation, good news of salvation, is a freight. We can't stop. Our minds will never comprehend. Uh, and never be able to soak it all in. Help us to, day by day, always try to absorb more of the power of the good news. Jesus' name.